Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another video. This is part two of Linux for DevOps crash course. Okay, so let's start. Uh, first thing I want to talk about, I received a comment in my last video uh, saying that please make videos on uh, system administration and AWS cloud ops engineer roles as well. So let me show you the roadmap that I want to follow uh, to create various courses. So, so I, I have already started Linux for DevOps. So anyone who is looking to get into Linux administration or systems administration role can follow this se this series Linux for DevOps. It's going to include everything that you need as a systems uh, administrator, okay, or a Linux administrator. Then someone who is looking to get into AWS Cloud Ops engineer role can follow the next course that will be coming up after this. AWS zero to hero okay and then after that I'm going to cover some other other courses as well so these are the courses that I want to create okay so one for docker kubernetes monitoring ansible scripting then some real-time projects and then I'm going to talk about DevOps interview question and answers okay so these are the type of courses that I want to create <clears throat> okay so just wanted to highlight this all right so let's close this and now let's come back to our video so as you can see i'm already logged in to the aws management console okay i'm on the default uh, dashboard okay so let's go to ec2 and you can see i already have one instance launched okay if you have uh, Come to this channel for the first time so this is actually part two of the series of the videos if you, if you want to see part one the link is in, in the description of the video so go check that out all right uh, where i i've shown how to create an ec2 instance in aws okay in that video so in this video i'm not going to show that so i have already created one instance and i'm going to use it to con to cover the concepts of linux in, in this video all right so let's start so uh, I, i'll just uh, go to my mobile x term client tab ssh client tab where i have already logged in okay go to cd and c so i'm inside the home directory of ec2 hyphen user and i'm logged in as ec2 hyphen user right now as you can see all right so i've prepared one ppt for this video so let me show that up okay so let's start okay so i just want to talk about a few uh, basics of linux cli and bash specifically so cli stands for command line interface and it is used to input instructions to a computer okay and that's what we use cli for to input instructions to a computer and in linux the program which uh, provides the cli is called a shell okay it's called a shell the shell is attached to a terminal to input instructions from keyboard okay now what is the meaning of this uh, these four sentences so as you can see when i logged in using ec2 hyphen user okay so as soon as i log in i get to this screen this screen is called as a terminal okay and it is attached to a program that runs by default when you log in that program is called bash B A S H, okay, or it's it's also it's all it's also called born again shell, okay. So this is the default program that runs when you log in as a user, okay. But this uh, this bash program cannot do anything on its own, okay. It has to attach to a terminal. Why it has to attach to a terminal? Because it has to uh, accept some commands. It has to perform some operations. And then it has to uh, give you the output okay so to interact with this bash program this this program is uh, is uh, attached to a terminal which we are seeing right now and we are able to interact with it and and we are able to put uh, some commands so that it, it can process it and then uh, give us the output okay so just remember this this part that this bash program has to attach to a terminal so that uh, one can provide input to it and then it, it can give you the output back 
okay so that's the meaning of these four lines then uh, bash or born again shell is the default shell in most of the linux uh, operating systems these days okay so you interact with a shell from a shell prompt okay the shell prompt is called this a dollar sign okay if i go back to my cli screen you can see whenever you log in as a regular user like ec2 hyphen user it is a regular user on this on the system you, you get this prompt okay so this is called the prompt of the regular user the dollar sign okay then for root it will be hash always okay if i switch to root how to switch to root from a regular user you can just type su do sudo space su space hyphen enter you see i've just I, I i just became root now and the prompt has changed from dollar to hash okay the meaning of this so this prompt also shows you okay if, if you're logged in as root user or not okay for root it will always be hash else it will be a dollar sign for any regular user okay yeah uh, one more thing i want to show you is how to check the default shell okay so to check that there's a command called echo echo is used to print anything in linux okay echo command is used to print anything so what do you want to print we want to print the default shell okay how to check the default shell so there's an environment variable in linux that stores the value of default shell for any user okay and to print a value of an environment variable in linux you use dollar sign then the name of the environment variable which is shell also linux is a case sensitive language so whatever is written in caps has to be represented in caps at all times and whatever is written in small letters it has to be in small letters okay if you if you change from small to caps caps to small the result of the uh, command is going to change okay remember this so echo space dollar shell if i hit enter i'll get the default shell which is slash bin slash bash okay so just remember this command okay and how to check this environment variable also to check all the environment variables in in, in your uh, in your current terminal just type env hit enter you will see all the environment variables which are already configured and to filter out what you can do is env space then you have to use this this pipe symbol on your keyboard then type grep grep to grab something from that from this uh, this whole output so i'm going to grab shell okay so shell is slash bin slash bash so when we run this command echo dollar shell it just printed the value that's stored in this environment variable so this environment variable holds the value slash bin slash bash okay also if you have to check the the default shell for any regular user what you can do is that there's one more way to do it you can again grab for the user okay so for example i want to see the the default shell for ec2 hyphen user so what i'll do is i'll try to grab the meaning of uh, this grab command is you just you're just trying to uh, capture some regular expression or some text from uh you know from uh, multiple lines of text in a file okay so i want to uh, capture the text as ec2 hyphen user and from where i want to capture this for that you have to specify the uh, path of the file where you which which you want to use so each local user in linux is stored in a file called slash etc slash passwd or passwd also so slash etc okay slash etc now uh, i've just uh, typed et and if i type tab it's going to complete the uh, path for me just remember this if you are uh, i mean uh, if you do not remember the exact path to any any directory or any file you can use the tab button okay it's going to uh, give you the option of completing the, the path okay if you have too many options just I mean, if you want to see all the options available for you, just type this tab key 
two times like this and see if you want to display all vanity possibilities i don't want to do it right now because it's going to uh, make no sense to me so i'll type no but if you want to see all the options that are available in a, in a, in a specific path for all the files and directories just type this tab button twice okay and and uh, to complete the path just type this tab key once okay as i did when i type et i just type tab and it, it just completed the path for me okay so slash etc slash p a s s w d pass w d so you see from this file which has um, multiple lines of data i was able to uh, capture details of ec2 hyphen user user only okay and if you see here okay uh, we're going to talk about this entire uh, line okay but i just want to to uh, check here the default shell that is configured for ec2 hyphen user and if you see at the last it is slash bin slash bash okay so this is this is, uh, just one more way of checking that okay all right next Next is commands. Okay, just want to give you some details of I mean, what exactly is a command. So each command in Linux is always a program. Okay, just remember one more thing. Uh, Linux is written in C language. Okay, so all the programs or all the commands that you run is a C program uh, behind the scenes. Okay, so whatever command you run is a, a it is just a program name that you are trying to call using a command okay and if you need any help with any of the command you can use either slash slash help or you can use man pages okay. how to how to do that for example there's a command called user mod okay we will we'll come to this command but there's a command but i don't know the uh, I mean, options to use this command okay the the flags that i have to apply after user mod so what you can do is after typing the command just give space and then type hyphen hyphen help and enter it's going to give you all the options that are available to use this command with see options all the options are available so these are called the options okay the options change the behavior of the command right if you use this hyphen b it's going to give you a different output if you if you type hyphen a the output will be different so these options will change the behavior of a particular command okay now this is about help command if you want to use the man pages so what you can do is just type m a n space then the command in our case is it is user mode so this man page is, is going to give you some additional details okay some really uh, descriptive sentences if you see here and, uh, and you can type space bar to scroll through this information okay like this see so many information is available so I mean, each and everything is already available on your Linux system, okay, about the command, if you want to see. And to, to just uh, come out of it, type Q button. New keyboard, okay. Then I'll clear the screen, Control L, or you can type clear, enter. Next is options, which I just spoke about. Options, which are, which is used to change the behavior of commands, the flags that you use. Then arguments. Arguments are the command targets. Okay, if I take the example of user mod command, okay, user mod, I think there's an example given already, hyphen L John. Okay. So hyphen capital L space J O H N. So J O H N is the target of this command here. Okay. So what this command does, it is this this user mod command is used to modify an existing user detail. Okay, here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to lock this user so that he cannot log into the system. Okay, so for that you have to use hyphen capital L, which stands for lock. So I'm trying to lock this user on the system so that he cannot log in. Okay, so in this case, the target is John, the command is user mod, the option is hyphen capital L. Okay, so this is an example of uh, commands, options, and arguments. Next file system hierarchy now whenever you install any linux operating system it always has some default directories that are created okay just like you have uh, uh, program files in windows so in so uh, similarly you have uh, these these different directories in linux which holds information to uh, you know 
for different reasons or a different piece of work that is happening behind the scenes in, on your Linux machine. Okay, this is because each each machine or VM or a server it, it has to perform some operations on its own so that it uh, keeps functioning well. All right, so these these uh, uh, different directories holds the information related to all that. So, so, so let's talk about it. So the main directory or the root directory where every data is stored on a, on the a Linux system is called root directory. And it is, it is represented as this uh, forward slash. Okay. So if I go back to my CLI screen, so to come out of this, to uh, come out of this uh, command and uh, get your prompt back, you can type control C and I'll get my prompt back. Okay, now if I have to go back to root directory, so I have to, I have to, to use uh, this command called cd, which stands for change directory, space, then forward slash, enter. If I do pwd now, I am under root directory. So this is the directory where, where all the data is stored. So that's why it's called root, okay, root. Next, inside root, you have a different directories, bin, boot, dev, etc. Okay, I'm not going to... I mean, uh, I'm going to details of each, but I just want to discuss a few which are important and the rest you can just, you know, uh, refer some some documentation uh, to go through each one of those. Okay, but I'm going to go through some which are really important to understand. The first one is slash etc. Slash etc stands the configuration file specific to this system, which means when you install a Linux operating system, it has some applications and processes that runs behind to ensure that your system is, is working well. Okay, so all those application data or the the config data is stored in slash etc directory. Okay, if I, if I go to slash etc, I'm already under root. So I just have to type cd space etc. If I do ls here, you can see there is a, so there are different processes and applications that are running on the system already because I did not install e any of any of this. So it is still running. So all this configuration data related to the system is stored in slash etc. All right, uh, after slash etc, uh, slash where, slash where stands for variable data, which means the data which changes over time. Okay, and just like your log data. So slash where is generally used to store logs. So whatever is happening on your system and whatever information is being logged is stored under slash where. Okay. So let's go to slash where now. Let's go back to my home directory slash root and let's go to slash where. Okay. If I do ls here, I can see different folders. So all these are storing the the uh, variable data okay and uh, particularly if i go into log cd log i do ls i can see uh, the uh, different logging data okay so this is what is really important under slash where and uh, as a linux administrator systems administrator or a uh, uh, devops engineer you um, uh, might want to check this information in case you're trying to troubleshoot an issue okay so you have to I mean, uh, uh, just go to this directory and depending on the type of issue that you're facing you can see all the logs here okay if i have to sort it out with the latest log at the end or at the bottom of the output you can do ls space hyphen ldra if i hit enter i can see the latest logs are in and are inside this messages file Okay, so in this way uh, you can check the variable data, uh, uh, the variable log data, okay, specifically. Next is slash run. Slash run is like the data that is being hold uh, in, 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 in memory, okay. So all, all the data is stored under slash run. So when you reboot, this uh, data is flushed away and it, 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 it will be recreated after reboot. Okay, so all the data that is being hold that is being uh, you know stored as the runtime data for your applications or processes is stored under slash run okay next is slash home slash home stands for home directory so if you create any new user any new regular user on on a linux system 
by default its home directory is created under slash home always okay so this is only for regular users if we have a root user then the home directory of the, of the root user will be slash root by default okay always remember slash home is for regular users slash root uh, slash root is for root user or the super user then slash tmp slash tmp is <clears throat> Uh, the the directory where you can store some temporary files and those files will be deleted after a period of time as you can as you can see here uh, any 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 files or directories that are stored under uh, slash tmp will be deleted after 10 days okay uh, uh, automatically by the system okay you don't have to worry about it so so sometimes when I mean, you want to do some temporary piece of work and you want to store some temporary data so that can be stored under slash tmp okay and, and you don't have to worry about if that data will be there or not uh, the data will be deleted automatically okay in this way uh, there's one more uh, slash tmp directory under slash where where if the data that is stored there is not accessed changed or modified for more than 30 days that data will also be deleted automatically then slash boot will hold uh, will hold all the files that are required by your linux system to boot okay so this is again uh, a pretty important so all all the data under slash boots uh, you know should be uh, uh, persisted all right then slash dev uh, which stands for devices so all the block devices that you attach to your Linux system all 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 those all those block device files uh, are stored under slash dev okay next <clears throat> next is slash usr slash pin so all the commands and, and utilities that a regular user can run uh, will be stored under slash usr slash pin okay and there's there's no practical to do here you can i mean once you are uh, logged in you can check yourself you can just I mean, go into these these uh, these uh, different directories and check what all information is there but it will, it will uh, hold the 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 commands or the binaries that a regular user can run then slash usr slash sbin is for system administration binaries so basically whatever the the commands are there for the for the root user will be stored under slash usr slash sbin next <clears throat> absolute and relative paths okay so this is this is this is uh, pretty important so let me do one thing let me go back to my home directory I'll clear the screen. I see I already have few directories here, so I'll just delete those. RM hyphen RF one. I don't have anything right now. So, so, so let's recreate the directory. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll do mkdir hyphen p space hyphen p space dir one then dir two and dir three. Now uh, I'm using hyphen p option. Hyphen p stands for parent. It means if you're trying to create a directory, directory three, okay, but uh, directory two and directory one are not available. This option will ensure that these two directories are also created, and then directory three, okay. So let's run the command. If I do ls. I will see directory one. If I go into directory one, do ls, I can see directory two. If I go under directory 2, do ls, I can see directory 3. Okay. So, this is how you can create these multiple directories uh, using the hyphen p option. Okay. Now, I'll clear the screen. Let's go back and see what an absolute and relative paths are. Okay. So, an absolute path begins at the root directory and, specific, uh, and specifies each subdirectory it traverses through. To reach the destination meaning of this is suppose i want to go to directory 3 okay i'll, I'll go back to my uh, root directory so i'm under slash root from here i want to go to sorry i'll, I'll go to the root directory cd space slash forward slash so i am under the root directory now okay so there's nothing behind this okay everything will be ahead of this okay because this is the root directory this is the directory which holds all the data on your linux system 
now suppose i want to reach dir3 from here okay so from here from here i can i can uh, do something like cd root then dir1 dir2 and dir3 so here if you see i did not specify the absolute path okay because i'm already under root directory okay so i don't have to specify the absolute path from here the path i mean uh, from here the path to dir3 starts from root okay so i'm using root then dir1 dir2 dir3 okay if i hit enter i'll do pwd so i am under dir3 okay but in cases suppose you are under slash where slash log for example i am under slash 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 log and now from here i have to go to directory 3 okay so how will i go so here if you see i mean here i just want to specify i just want to talk about again i did not use the absolute path the absolute path will always begin from root okay but i, I did not specify the absolute path i specified the relative path because i was already in the root directory so i specified a relative path to this root directory and not the absolute path which starts with root okay that's what the document says so absolute path always begins with root okay but here if i am under slash where slash log and if, and if I have to go to directory 3 from here, in that case, I have to specify the absolute path. Okay. So that's the way uh, I mean, I can reach this, this, this directory 3 from where I am right now. So for absolute path, you'll do CD then it will always start with, start with root. Okay, root directory. Okay, root directory. Just don't get confused between this root and this root. So this is the root directory and slash root is home directory of root user okay so i mean when i say root I, I mean the root directory so i am under root okay i am under root which means i am under root directory so from here i have to specify the absolute path which starts with root slash root slash dir1 slash dir2 slash dir3 pwd i am under dir3 directory okay so it depends where you are on the linux system so or you can use either uh, the relative path or the absolute path okay there's one more example given where log messages okay so uh, if i'm under slash where and i have to um, go to this path when I, uh, when I have to reach this this messages file okay so what i can do is i want to uh, it, just print the contents of this message this this uh, messages file okay so from here what i can do is since i'm already in the slash where i'll do cat which is which is used to uh, print the contents of a file and i'll do log then messages because i'm already in a slash where i don't have to specify the absolute path i can use the relative path okay in this way i can i can just print out the value of this this messages file okay so this is how you can use an absolute path or a relative path okay so here uh, the the definition suggests that a relative path specifies only the path which is necessary to reach the file from the working directory example a user if if a user is in slash where directory and you have to go to messages you can just type log space messages and not where uh, slash where slash log slash messages okay so this is the difference between absolute and relative paths next slide dot and double dot now on each directory on your linux system if i do ls space hyphen al i will see these two special directories dot and double dot okay what is the meaning of this this single dot represents the present working directory always okay let's see it in action pwd if i do pwd i'm under slash where if i do cd to dot enter if i do pwd again i will be in the same directory slash where because this dot represents the present working directory just remember this 
this dot is used to specify the present working directory on, on the Linux system. Then this uh, uh, double dot uh, means the uh, the parent directory, which means the directory just before where you are right now. So I am under let's clear the screen. I am under slash where. All right. So the directory just below this or uh, just behind this will be slash right so if i do cd space double dot hit enter if i do pwd i will be under slash so th the meaning of this this uh, double dot is to go back one step from where you are currently okay so i was under slash where when i typed cd space uh, space dot dot i went to slash okay so this is the meaning of single dot and double dot and on each linux directory it will be uh, present wherever you go it will always be present okay dot and double dot okay next is slide number seven uh, sorry This is done. This is done. The slide number seven. File management commands. So in my, in my first video, I already spoke about these commands. Okay, but I just wanted to give you a small summary of all the things uh, uh, which are under file management. Okay, so I'm not going to go into I mean, practicing these since I already covered in in part one of this of this series of videos. So you can check that video again if you haven't and you can just i mean uh, try to practice these so just try to practice these on your own i think it is it is pretty straightforward okay i don't have to explain much here i mean if you have seen my first video okay so just try to practice these and if you have any any doubts just i mean put it in, in the comment section and i am going to reply to all your queries all right let's move to slide number eight uh, this is about the local users and groups so i mean we are into a user management in linux okay so in linux system or any any operating system uh, which is accessed by you know multiple users and uh, multiple teams in that case it is pretty important that you're able to manage the right access for the right people and only the access that they need okay so to do that we can create a local users and groups to control all that access to to different files and data on a, on a linux system okay so let's just i mean go through some 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 concepts about, around that so every process that you see running is always a running program. Just remember this. Okay, so each each process is a running program on the Linux system and each process will be run as a particular user. Now when I say user, it can be a regular user, it can be a super user, okay, or it can be a system user, okay. There are some users which are system users as well because when you install Linux, okay, I mean when you... Uh, uh, just create one Linux uh, 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 server. Uh, there will be some system users created by the uh, by the system on its own, and that is to once again control the the uh, the functioning of, of 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 your server as a whole. Okay, so there are some some processes and applications running behind the scenes so that our machine is in uh, an optimal condition at all times. Okay. So, so each each process will always be run as a particular user, and each file, each file is owned by a user on Linux machine always. Okay. So, how to check that? If I go back to my CLI screen and go back to my root directory, now if I have to check what all users are already created on the machine, okay, because I I did not get any user until now on this machine okay and if i have to check what all users are already created again you have to refer to that same file slash etc slash pass wd so to print the contents of that file i will use cat command space slash etc slash passwd and you can see all these users are system users okay these users specifically <clears throat> and this is a uh, uh, like a regular user which is created by the Linux machine on its own. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, uh, so you can see all the users are already created by 
our Linux machine and all these have a reason that they are created and they perform some some specific function behind the scenes okay so all these are system users here so this is this is about the users that are created by default then uh, let's see some commands i think these commands we've already practiced in our, in our first video but i just wanted to um, cover here once again id command if i type id here hit enter you can see the information related to our current logged in user okay so i mean what all information is present uid which stands for user id so for for uh, root user on the on the on the linux system it will always be zero by default Okay, similarly, you have GID or group ID. It will it will also be zero by default. Okay, and then the groups. So each user on a Linux system is always a part of a group. Okay, so this is called the primary group. So for this root user, the the primary group is root only. So the name of the group is also root. Okay, then there's some additional information which we don't have to worry about right now. So just ignore this information. Okay, let's just hit Control D to log out as root user. And here I'm logged in as EC2 hyphen user, which is a regular user. Now if I type ID command again, I can see some information, some additional information because I'm logged in as a, as a regular user. So once again, the UID or user ID is 1000 for EC2 hyphen user. The group ID is 1000. Okay, and there are some groups, and and this is the the primary group of the EC2 hyphen user, and then the other groups are called supplementary groups. Okay, so this EC2 hyphen user user is a part of multiple groups here. This group, this group, and this groups. So there are three groups, which are, uh, which are uh, attached to this EC2 hyphen user. Okay, so in this way, I, I, you can check some uh, details of the logged in user. But if you have to check the details of other users also, you can use this id command. For example, if I do, I'm not sure if I, this command works, id root, it works. So if I do id root, which means I want to check the details of root user, I can see some additional details of the root user also. So uid is 0, gid is 0 and groups is root. So okay, so so uh, this is a way to use this ID command. Next is okay, ID and ID space username I already covered. LS space hyphen L. So LS space hyphen L, as I mentioned in my last video, also it is used to see some additional information in your directory where you are to list out the files and see some additional details. Okay, so uh, here we spoke about that each process is being run as a particular user, but if you have if you have to check which I mean, file is related to which user. You can use the ls space hyphen l command. Okay, and, and 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 when you do when you do so, you will see this third column, which is I mean going to hold information of a user that is attached to that that particular file or directory. So, so let's see it in action. Okay, so I am under slash home slash ec2 user. If I do ls space hyphen l, hit enter. Sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so, so there's no file right now. So let's do one thing. Let's create some files. Touch F1, F2, F3, F4. Okay, let's do let's run the command again. Now I can see some information related to the file being owned by the user. So if you see here, third column means this is the first column, this is the second column, this is the third column. So in, in the third column, I can see name of the user. Okay, so ls space space hyphen l can also be used to check which file is related to which user. So, so this file is owned by ec2 hyphen user. The meaning of this here. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, one more thing related to id command. <clears throat> Your operating system will always track the information uh, with the with the help of uid user id. But for us, it will be username. Okay, so when we are going to uh, remember the details related to any user or any file related to his his or her username, but for operating system, it will be user ID always. Okay, and slash etc slash uh, wd. I already spoke about it stores information about the local users on the Linux system. Okay, 
now this this file has a particular format and there are some particular fields in it okay so so let's see it in action <clears throat> i'll kill the screen and i'll become root here so i'll do s u d o space s u space hyphen enter i became root again and then i'll I'll try to I'll try to um, uh, append the information related to slash etc slash pass wd file. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll try to grab information related to ec2 hyphen user only. So if you see there's uh, there are too many uh, uh, lines of data available in this file, but I just want to grab information for a particular user so let's do it for ec2 hyphen user so how to do that again i'll use grab command grab space ec2 hyphen user space slash etc slash pass wd hit enter and you will see the information only related to ec2 hyphen user and not all the information so here if you see the format of this file has a, a particular sequence <clears throat> so this is the username ec2 hyphen user then there's this password since you cannot see the password directly so it is represented as x okay so this is actually the uh, password field then you have uid or user id then you have gid or group id then you have uh, something called as comment which is generally the name of the user so when you create a user you have the option to put some comments okay and we generally keep it as the name of the user so the name of the user or the comment here is cloud user then the path of the home directory of the user which is slash home slash ec2 hyphen user and then the default shell of the user which is slash bin slash bash okay so that's all the, that is given in this screenshot also here okay next so username is a mapping of a user id to a name for the benefit of human users okay as i mentioned <clears throat> just, a, just a while ago so a, a password is where uh, historically passwords were kept in an encrypted format. So now the passwords are stored in slash etc slash uh, shadow in, a, in an encrypted format. So, so let's see it in action. Clear the screen. If I do cat slash etc slash shadow. If you see here, <clears throat> this thing. So uh, this is uh, representing the password okay but uh, but again you, you cannot see the the password directly so it is it is just hidden you can say or it is encrypted okay but the password information is stored in slash etc slash uh, shadow file okay <clears throat> then uid stand for user id a number that identifies the user at the most fundamental level gid stands for users primary group id number group will be discussed in a moment uh Okay, so I mean, we'll talk about this this uh, group section. Then G E S E O S or Jacko's field is is the arbitrary text which uh, which I already already mentioned is represented by a comment which is generally the name of the user. Okay, when we create the user, then slash home slash dir is the location of the user's personal data and configuration files, of course, and then shell is a program that runs the user uh, runs as the user logs in the default shell. Okay. So um, uh, for a uh, for a regular user, it is uh, normally the program that provides the user's command line prompt. Okay, then uh, what is a group? Like users, a group have a common name and group ID. Okay, and uh, if you, and you can see all all the group names in slash etc slash group. So if I do cat slash etc slash group, I can see all the groups created on this Nux system. Okay, so these many groups are created. Then this is this is very important. Each user on a Linux system will always have exactly one primary group. Always, okay, one primary group. This this primary group is really important because whenever this user creates any files or directories, the the group permissions will be equal to the primary group of that user. Always, just remember this. Okay, I'll repeat. Whenever any user creates any files or directories, the group ownership of that new file or the new directory will be owned by the primary group of the user always. Okay. 
then for for local users the the primary group is defined by the gid number of the group listed in the third field of slash etc slash pass the beauty which we have already seen the gid number is the third field in slash etc slash pass wd okay the normally the primary group of uh, the new files created by the user so this is the the same thing that i just said then uh, normally the the primary group of of a newly created user is a newly created group with the same name as the user the user is the only member of the user private group the meaning of this is when you create a new user a new group with that same name is always created and it is it is the uh, the the uh, primary group of that user by default okay you have the option to change it using the user mod command but uh, by default that new group will be the the primary group of that new user and the name will be same as the username okay so, so let's just try to create a user now let's do user add so this this command is used to create users user add space username let's type it as john the user is created okay if i have to check the information related to this user whatever information is created after i ran this command you can use the grab command grab space john i want to grab john from where i want to grab it slash etc slash passwd so you can see this user is assigned a user id by default 1001 this is the gid then uh, this is the home directory and this is the default shell okay now if i have to check other information you can do id space j o h n and once again uid gid and groups to which is assigned if you see so i did not assign this user to any group but by default one new group was created with j o h n with the same username okay and it is assigned as the primary group to this user okay so this is pretty important to understand next slide number 10 apart from the primary group there are some supplementary groups also which the which the user can be part of okay so uh, users may be a member of zero or more supplementary groups so these supplementary groups are, are not mandatory but I mean, uh, I mean you can have as many supplementary groups as you want the users that are supplementary members of local groups are listed in the last field of the groups entry in slash etc slash group for local users user membership is determined by a comma separate list of users found in the last field of the groups entry in slash etc slash group if i do uh, this id command here let's do id command for ec2 hyphen user as i showed you uh, uh, just a few minutes ago if you see here for ec2 hyphen user uid is uh, 1000 gid is 1000 and the groups if you see this is the primary group but it is also part of two additional group which are called a supplementary group so this adm and system d journal are two supplementary groups which are which are uh, associated with user ec2 hyphen user the meaning of this okay so this is how you can check the the, the group information of a particular user then uh, just remember this this thing this is it is pretty important that the root user in linux is like a like playing a game in god mode so it should be used wisely or else it can damage the system it is always recommended that you don't use the root user until it is really needed and you always work as a regular user okay just remember this okay i mean whenever you are working in a i mean on a uh, production system you should always try to use a regular user okay whenever possible and, and try to avoid the root user next is switching users with su so there's one command called su command which is used to switch user okay let's try to switch to john user so i'll do su space hyphen space j o h n and i'm logged in as john now okay if i do id i can see i'm logged in as john and, and i'm not logged in as root user so this is a way to switch user so su stands for switch user if you want to switch to another user you can do su command and also if you are logged in as root user and if you run this command you will not be permitted for password because you're already logged in as root user 
okay so you are not but if you are logged in as a regular user and then you are switching to another regular user you will be asked to enter the password of that new user that you want to become okay for example let's just log out and let me set the password for john passwd john so this passwd uh, command is used to uh, set the password for a user okay so i'm trying to set the password for john user so passwd space john i'll enter the password re-enter the password enter now i will log out as root user and i log in as issued user now i am logged in as a regular user now if i want to switch to john as you space hyphen j o h n i will be asked for the password of john user okay if i enter the password correctly only then i'll be able to log in as uh, log in as a john user okay so this is how the, the security works okay if you have a system which is accessed by multiple users and you want to protect the information or the data accessed by i mean uh, this one user from another so this is the way to do it okay if you have this password set and if if, if someone is, is trying to switch the the user then he or she has to enter the password of that user as well okay next then user and username creates the user as i just uh, showed you and it makes an entry in slash etc slash passwd file then there's one more command called user mod which is used to change the existing user if I, so i mean once again there are different flags that you can use or the the different details that you want to change for a particular user existing user you can use these 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 uh, different flags okay for example let's do one thing let's try to see so i'm logged in as john user now let's come out of it control d and i'll become root again now i want to use this user mod command so i'll do user mod space hyphen capital l remember one more thing i think i spoke about it already that you uh, this this linux language is uh, is is uh, i mean this linux system is a command center operating system so whatever is in capital should stay in capital okay and whatever is in small should stay in small else the behavior of the command will change so user mod space hyphen capital l and the name of the user john so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to log the user using hyphen uh, capital l which stands for log so i'm trying to log the user now if i go back if i become easy to have a user and if i try to switch to john i won't be able to do so because john user is logged authentication failure okay now let me become root again so i logged out log back in going to take a moment here any moment now all right i'm logged in as issue to have a user now if i again become root so i log this john user now i want to unlock so for unlock it is user mod space hyphen capital u in the name of the user so i unlock the user okay now if i switch to john user i'll be asked for the password and i'll be able to log in okay so this is how you can use this this user mod command to change the to, to change the details of a particular user okay this is just one example once again if you do user mod hyphen hyphen help you can see so many details okay for example you want to change the home directory of the user okay so i'll do user mod hyphen d uh, for which user i want to do it for john and i want to change the home directory of the user to 
sorry uh, I'm logged in as John user I have to become root so I'll log out and I'll become root again okay now I will change the home directory of John user so I'll use I'll use user mod hyphen D J O H N and I want to put the home directory of the user as slash home slash ec2 hyphen user for example must be an absolute path home directory okay so yeah, I think I have to use I have to specify the path first and then the name of the user that's, that's why it gave that message so this is how uh, I will do uh, I'll change the home directory of a of an existing user all right now if I switch to John permission denied permission denied because this is because this ec2 hyphen user directory is already owned by another user so that's why we, we got this message okay so let's do one thing let's come out of it let's get another directory mkdir slash home slash john uh, or under under home let's create temp okay now if I run that command again and I'll change the path to slash home slash temp okay now if I switch to John I can okay now if I do PWD you can see the home directory of the John user was changed from slash home slash John to slash home slash temp so this is the way you can use this user remote command to change the, the details of existing user and once again there are so many different options user mod and help and you can see there are different flags okay so so I mean uh, you can try to use all these flags once uh, when you practice this command okay and similarly on the on in the PPT also it's given so so there are different flags that you can use with this command next is user del once again very important command so I'll log out I'll become root so now if I have to delete this user John user so the command is user del user del space username but when I when I when I delete the user like this I'm not deleting the home directory of the user okay let's see it in action so I'll delete the user the user is deleted but the home directory of the user will still remain but when uh, Ideally, when you're deleting the user, the home directory of the user should also be also be deleted so that you can, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you can just I mean flush his data so that uh, no other user can access his data. Okay, but in this case, since I did not use this hyphen r command, hyphen small r command, uh, or or this um, hyphen space, sorry, uh, space hyphen small r flag, the home directory of the user is still intact. Okay, and you can check that. If I do ll or oh sorry I'll do ls space hyphen al slash home you can see stamp directory if you remember uh, this stamp directory was the home directory of, of John user okay so we have to get rid of it manually slash temp okay but the uh, Ideal way of deleting a user is always use use user del user del space hyphen small r and then the name of the user. Okay, but since I've already deleted this user, it, it won't work. So what I'll do is I'll create another user, user add. Uh, I'll just name this user as Tom. Okay, and I can see home directory of Tom user created Tom right now I have to uh, uh, if I have to delete this user and I have to delete this his home directory also I'll use user del space hyphen small r name of the user in this way I am deleting the home directory as well 
now if i do ls space hyphen al slash home under slash home i won't see tom's directory it's gone since i use space hyphen r option okay so one more important concept related to user management okay and one more thing this will also delete the entry form slash etc slash pass wd okay since the user is deleted all right so that's all about user management uh in linux so i've i've covered several things i think i've covered a lot in this video if you if you liked my video please uh like and share with your friends and family and uh do subscribe to my channel and and uh hit the bell icon so that you can get the the notification of my next videos all right guys i'm going to end this video now uh, thanks for watching the video and i'm going to see you in the next one